very good evening to everyone and a very happy Diwali to all of you. Today, actually, Diwali has been started. It is a big festival from all of us and a very happy Diwali to all of you. Today, we're going to start last chapter from this case taking part, that is the examination of the patient. So we have started with 23, 24, 25, and last one, the 26 one. And all aspects, that is right from aphorism number 83 to 104, all are explained from his point of view by Kent. He tried to explain his own philosophy regarding the um, all the case taking method, whatever the minor points which Hanuman sir have tried to explain, he elaborated in his own way. So many aspects he has covered. Today we're going to learn the last one, that is the 26th chapter dedicated to this the examination of the patient. So let us start with the chapter, what he says about the examination of the patient in this chapter. It is important to avoid getting confused by two disease images that may exist in the body at the same time. A chronic patient, for instance, may be suffering from an acute disease and the physician on being called may think that it is necessary to take totality of the symptom. But if he should do that in an acute disease, mixing both chronic and acute symptoms together, he will become confused and will not find the right remedy. The two things must be separated. See, very clearly he has mentioned about these two things, chronic and acute. Chronic is always a chronic, acute is always acute. The states are different. Chronic disease will take its own time to develop. Its a pace is different. In acute, the pace is different. And that's why the, you, whenever you are considering the medicines, if you are dealing with acute, deal with the acute remedy. If you are dealing with the chronic, deal with the chronic remedy. The acute remedy will not be useful for chronic case or chronic remedy will not be useful for acute case. And this confusion should not happen. The concept, if you read this concept, then there will be no jumbling. Many, many homeopaths make a confusion regarding it. They tell that you give the chronic remedy to the acute patient. No, it's not like that. Pace, it depends ultimately upon the pace of the disorder and accordingly the pace of the remedy. The both things are essential. Both things are necessary. And that's why when you are dealing with the acute case, you should find it out a remedy which is acute enough. When you are dealing with the chronic case, you should deal with the chronic remedy. And this is what he is explaining over there. The two things must be separated. The group of symptoms that constitutes the image and appearance of acute myasm must now be prescribed for. The chronic symptoms will not, of course, be present when the acute myasm is running because the latter suppresses or supersedes, suspends the chronic symptom. But the diligent physician, not knowing this is so, might wrongly gather together all the symptoms that the patient has had in a lifetime. Again, on the other hand, in gathering together the chronic symptoms of, for the prescription, it is sufficient to mention merely that patient has had typhoid. Patient has had typhoid or measles or other acute myasms. Such diseases are not part of chronic myasm. The symptoms of acute attacks were separate and by themselves. So this is what is explained. You must understand the disease processes. When you are dealing with any disease, you must find it out what disease process is running. If you are dealing with the chronic, deal with chronic totality. Don't interfere with the acutes. If patient is coming in a, a chronic patient suffering from some disorder, comes to you with an acute some disorder, then you have to take into consideration the acute disease only. Then you have to give him a remedy which will work for that acute state only. And this is very important. So the question which is mentioned by Sharu, chronic remedy never replaces acute in all cases, sir. Yes, generally it is not so. Generally, acute works as an acute, chronic works as a chronic. 
acute if state is acute enough the paste should match yes it might be possible kali bichromicum even though defecting remedy has an acute paste you can utilize that remedy as an acute also as well as chronicles but the, for that purpose you must have a thorough knowledge about the medicinal action every remedy when you are learning you learn the pace of the remedy you learn the how the remedy used to produce its actions how fast enough it used to produce the action if you understand them then you can utilize then you can judge the pace of the remedy so this is this is too important if you consider kali bichromicum there is shifting rheumatism a defecting remedy but shifting acute rheumatism of syphilitic myelom that's why it has been written over there in Kali Bichromicum, syphilitic rheumatism. You can treat that. And all those things matter a lot. So you must know all those things in proper way so that you can very clearly treat all those things. So these are the things one must understand and clear. So just a minute. Sorry, just a minute. An important call was there. So you must should you should not make a um, confusion regarding the actions of medicines. It should be very clear in your mind. You must read second paragraph what he says. You must realize that the effort to prescribe for two distinct myism will result in error. If you practice in the western part of this country. You will often get confused cases, a sample of which would be about as follows. A patient has been suffering from intermittent fever and has been treated with medicines, quinine, arsenic, and low potencies of this and that drug until the case has been complicated. You learn that the symptoms now are different from what they were in the beginning, that there has been a transformation scene. You prescribe for them as they are now, regarding it as a species of malaria. You prescribe for them with view to antedating all drugs that had, had that he has had, and your remedy brings about surprise. It opens out the case in a wonderful manner. The patient up to this time was unable to give anything descriptive of the original state of his malaria. But he comes back in the course of a week or two and says, Doctor, I am now as I was in the beginning. Well, what are your symptoms now? And you'll find that one evening he was he has a five o'clock chill with its its accompanying symptoms that last him a good portion of night. And then he has a well day and next forenoon he has an eleven o'clock chill. Then two well day. If you examine each one each one of these states, you'll find that two chills begin in a different place and heat of each begins in a different place and symptoms of two attacks are totally different. Such a thing will seem unlikely to one who has never seen it, but one who has lived in the West and practiced accurately will see such things unknown to those who have practiced will it's what is called as queen in a correct prescription will disintegrate, disintegrate, distangle these two malarial myelomes and show that two exist in the body at the same time, each having conditions quite different from the other. These two can coexist, have their own times and expressions without interfering with each other to any great extent. The big doses of quinine will complicate them and cause a general clouding of things. So, helter skelter and disorderly that nobody can tell anything about. Now he is explaining the problem of double complex disease. Complex disease. It happens many times that malaria, when it is treated with the quinine, always gets suppressed. If it gets suppressed and when it recurs, it has again has a different features. Every time it has been changed and patient comes to you after treatment of malaria for one month, two months and then he comes to you and when you are dealing, you are not getting fresh symptoms. 
you are getting a confused symptomatology which has been suppressed by some allopathic drubbing or quinine. And when you try to prescribe for that patient, depending upon the present state, patient feels better for time being and he comes again to you and he starts explaining about his symptoms. Then he starts explaining he, had an, he has an attack of the disease on day one like this. Chill has started at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. Then there was a gap and then the chill has started on another time. This, then he is explaining that there are two malarial focus in one individual at two different cycles developed over me. It is only because, because, because of the separation. And you get confused picture over there. This is what is called as quinine suppression or quinine malaria. And it happens in our Materia Medica. We have when malaria is suppressed by quinine for longer time of duration, the arsenic is the remedy. The another is pulsatile anatremure, not pulsatile anatremure is another remedy, which we can use in such types of complex disorders. Here, you have to take into consideration what exactly the patient is suffering from, what miasm he is showing, whether he is showing a simple miasm or where he, whether he is showing the complex one which is produced because of allopathic drumming. And if it is so, then you have to clearly find it out what is presenting. Then if there is a remedy which covers the complex, you can find it out that if it is not so, then Find it out what, which is dominating, which is presenting. Treat that miasm first. Then still this is persist. Find it out. Go take whole case. Find it out again a right totality and right remedy. And then you can treat such complexes. And this happens many times. During Hanemanian time, there were less number of remedies. And that's why he has to use this method very commonly. Now we have ample remedies in our hand. And many times we never we never need to utilize two different remedies for two different complexes. We have we can have a remedy which covers both things at a time. That depth uh, that um, such types of remedy where that depth is present are pre available today. And that's why if we are able to find it out or judge a remedy which has that depth, we can utilize and we can give it. Or this, another method, that one complex which is dominating, treated with the help of simulimum, and then the remaining one latter. Both methods Hanneman have explained in his organ of medicine, and both we must know. Both are correct. Nothing is wrong. And we must understand them properly. And this is what he explains over there in this paragraph, that such types of methods, or such types of miasms with which patients present to us. Then he further says, if in such a case you were to attempt to prescribe remedy that had both these groups, you would, you would fail to cure. Select the worst one and let the other one alone, entirely ignoring it. It is bad policy to give one remedy for one and another for another. Means it is at a time two different remedies for the to the patient at the same time is a wrong policy. You treat first with one remedy. The bad one, which you have to take into consideration, find it out a remedy, treat that. Then whatever remains, then you find it out again a remedy and then treat that later, not at a time. Single out the worst one and cover it carefully with a remedy and you will find it disappears and the other one comes on, just as the patient had not a remedy at all. So if you treat one complex, then the next one comes up then redefine the totality. Find it out a perfect remedy and prescribe for that. And this is what he is explaining. And then he further says, now do not be in too great hurry about removing the second one. Now do not be in too great hurry about removing the second one. You will find that after one has been removed, the patient will improve and one that has remained will become more and more apparent from day to day, then prescribe for it. So should not be in a hurry that one after another you prescribe very fast. Wait for some time, let it come out, find it out the totality, then catch the totality, find it out the right remedy and prescribe. 
the method which he elaborates is very clear and he is very clear with the concepts also so these concepts should be very very clear in your mind i think we'll stop over here because now there will be another question which he will going to explain in next paragraph i think we'll finish one more and then we'll stop mm -hmm. the illustration this illustrates the doctrine of not prescribing for an acute and chronic trouble together never prescribe for any two conditions unless they be complicated one chronic disease can be complicated with each other the acute is never complicated with chronic and acute suppresses the chronic and they never become complex of course the allopaths will tell you that the about the sequelae of measles scarlet fever etc but they know nothing about it and their pathology teaches them nothing what is true concerning it that which comes out after self limiting diseases have run their course is not due to the to the disease itself the sequelae of measles are not due to the measles the sequelae of scarlet fever are not due to scarlet fever but to a prior state of the patient a psoriatic disorder may come up after scarlet fever and or measles and must be treated as so see he is very clearly defining all those things he is explaining the Mm, disorders that acute presents as an acute there will be presentation is an acute way chronic will present itself as a chronic you should not mix them together if there is a case of scarlet fever or if there is a case of measles then you treat that measles with an acute remedy for that specific state find it out a remedy and prescribe for it and then the chron chronic one again will come back this is not the sequelae of mizal this is this he was having earlier he was running that but because of acute temporarily it was suspended and then it will it has returned back but if you suppress measles it it's it can lead to complication if you suppress the measles it it can lead to a grave complication like ssp subserosal panencephalitis that can be a sequelae but that is because of suppression of the with the allopathic medicine allopathic drug other these sequelae never have so these are the things one must know properly so concepts were very clear in his mind regarding all those things and he explains over there these things very clearly what is it that which come out after all self limiting diseases have run their course is not due to the disease itself the sequelae of measles are not due to the measles the sequelae of scarlet fever are not due to scarlet fever but to a prior there was some disturbance in the internet because of which this has happened uh we'll conclude with this last sentence of the of that paragraph a psoriatic disorder may come up after scarlet fever or measles and must be treated as a sore and this is what he is explaining over there to conclude that paragraph that if patient comes with acute disease like scarlet fever or acute disease like measles you treat that with acute but if some chronic malady which was present over there since long time then you must treat that chronic disease with a letter with the anti soric remedy if it is from soric myelin and this uh, mixture should not be done acute with chronic and finding it out a remedy and this concept he is explaining in her over there some part of it is remaining we will finish that in tomorrow session and then we'll conclude this kent's philosophy and we'll meet thereafter after the ball so tomorrow we'll finish this chapter and we'll finish today evening i it is not possible for me to um, take matra medica session so it is not possible tomorrow definitely we'll continue with matra medica session so thank you being there we'll meet again tomorrow in evening with this same chapter and complete the 26 chapter thanks a lot